For Pluralsight, I'm David Tucker, and this is Cloud Tracker on Amazon Web Services. It's our first episode of the series, so stay tuned for the news, updates, and resources that you need if you're building solutions on AWS. At Pluralsight, we know that one of the biggest challenges cloud developers, administrators, engineers, and architects face is keeping up to date with new services, concepts, and resources. And that's why we're bringing you Cloud Tracker. My name is David Tucker, and I am an author at Pluralsight and a cloud strategist. Each month, I'll be giving you insights into key announcements and platform updates for AWS. In addition, I'll be highlighting key resources that you can leverage to take your skills to the next level. Now that we have that out of the way, let's dive into the updates for May 2021. AWS Step Functions is a powerful serverless orchestration service, but up until now, it has been painful to understand exactly what data is going into and out of each task in your workflow. AWS has addressed this by releasing the Step Functions Data Flow Simulator in the AWS console, and it's going to take the guesswork out of configuring your input path, output path, and result path. This feature includes a real-time view into how your JSON path queries will change the data for a single task. In addition, this tool may give you insight into ways to customize the data within your tasks that you weren't familiar with. This tool initially launched in four different regions, but AWS has announced the intent to launch it in all commercial regions in the near future. Check out your preferred region or just jump over to US East 1 to give it a try. Next, we have two big announcements for all of you that integrate Amazon Athena into your data workflow. First, Amazon Athena ML is now generally available. This feature enables you to call a SageMaker endpoint directly within your Athena queries. When working with SageMaker, you define what data will be passed between Athena and SageMaker, as well as the corresponding data types. Once you have this in place and execute the query, you'll be able to get back the results of your inference call from SageMaker. I've included a link to an article from Amazon that shows how this was integrated for anomaly detection within an existing data set. The next Athena announcement is the ability to use Lambda for user-defined functions. If you want to execute custom code against your data within the query process, this feature will enable you to do just that. If you're using Java, you can leverage the open source Amazon Athena Query Federation SDK to create your user-defined functions. The launch announcement, which will be in the episode notes, includes multiple resources to help you get started with this feature. I sometimes feature an announcement because it is so big, it can fundamentally change the way you use the platform. And sometimes I feature a service simply because there are so many smaller announcements that it makes sense to catch everyone up with what's going on. And that's what I have today with the Amazon Elasticsearch service. First, Amazon announced in April that they were creating a new community-driven open source fork of Elasticsearch and Kibana. This fork was derived from version 7.10.2, this new project will be named OpenSearch. This also means that in the near future, the Amazon Elasticsearch service will be renamed the Amazon OpenSearch service. Now, in addition to this announcement, AWS announced that the Amazon Elasticsearch service now supports version 7.10. This release brings some indexing performance improvements as well as composable index templates. With this new release, AWS has also added support for asynchronous queries. This can be critical for massive data sets across large clusters. This allows you to submit a query, monitor its progress, and retrieve the results at a future time. Finally, AWS also announced that you can now effectively integrate Power BI with their Elasticsearch service using the Elasticsearch SQL engine. Links to all of these announcements can be found in the episode notes. Do you have virtual machines that take a long time to initialize? If you do, chances are that you have run into problems scaling your workload, especially if you have bursts of traffic. In some cases, you simply can't initialize new instances fast enough to respond to scaling needs. If this is you, AWS has a solution and it's called Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling Warm Pools. This feature enables you to have instances that are ready to pull into your auto scaling group at a moment's notice. As a note, this feature could increase your cost as this pre-initialization means you're gonna be running more instances than you were previously. However, if you've run up against these challenges, chances are you'd probably gladly trade a little bit of money to solve this problem for you. There is a good deal of configurability with this feature, so check out the documentation to see how you can integrate this into your auto-scaling groups. 
Next, we'll be diving into our list of platform updates and content that you should be familiar with. While these might not be as big as our featured announcements, these updates could impact the work you're doing on the platform. And first up, we have EventBridge. So EventBridge was updated this month to support one of its biggest outstanding needs, cross-region event support. Previously, organizations had to handle events in the region they were dispatched in, but now you can centralize your handling of events with this new feature. This works by enabling you to use a cross-region event bus as a target from other regions. At the time this feature was launched, your destination event bus needed to be in US East 1, US West 2, or EU West 1. For more information and a walkthrough of this new feature, check out the announcement blog post in the episode notes. Now, if you're building iOS apps that integrate with AWS Amplify, you can now integrate with the platform more easily because the Amplify iOS SDK is now available via the Swift Package Manager. This means you no longer need to leverage CocoaPods to get this library added to your project. There is one note with this though. The AWS Predictions plugin is not supported yet by the version that is in the Swift Package Manager. So if you need to use that functionality, dust back off CocoaPods and plug it back in. Visit the link in the episode notes to get your iOS app up and running with AWS Amplify and the Swift Package Manager. AWS released some big updates to API Gateway that enable you to do a lot more with your custom domain names. You can now route different path segments under a custom domain to different APIs. And this works for both HTTP and REST-based APIs. But don't get me started on how confusing the naming of those two different API types are. That, that would take a whole other video to cover. But this now opens up additional possibilities that just weren't possible before. You can now implement path-based API versioning, you can configure a different API type per path, which is huge for organizations that want to leverage some of the features of a REST-based API in some places, but other HTTP API capabilities in other places. This feature is now available in all regions where API Gateway is available. Now, managing user accounts in AWS SSO is a huge improvement for multi-account configurations. However, if you've adopted it, you've learned that it isn't fully supported in all AWS tools. And yes, I'm looking at you AWS CDK developers. This month, AWS announced support for both AWS SSO and Assume Role with multi-factor authentication with the Visual Studio Toolkit for AWS. Now, as a note, this is for Visual Studio and not Visual Studio Code as VS Code already had this capability. In the blog post I've linked to, you can see what you need to do to take advantage of this feature in Visual Studio. The Advanced Query Accelerator, or Aqua, is now generally available for Amazon Redshift. If you are new to Aqua, it is a high-speed cache for Redshift that, according to AWS, delivers up to 10 times faster query performance than other enterprise cloud data warehouses. To leverage this feature, you need to be using either the RA316XL or RA34XL nodes. With these nodes, you can leverage Aqua at no additional cost. At launch, this feature is available in five regions and is planned for additional regions in the near future. And finally, if you're using SageMaker, you need to click the link in the episode notes. AWS has announced some price cuts to SageMaker as well as the ability to leverage savings plans for up to 64% savings on your machine learning workloads. So go check it out today if you're using SageMaker. Every person working in the cloud has to deal with the challenge of determining how to continually improve their skill set. This is a problem that we are going to help you solve here on Cloud Tracker. So today, I'm going to share several resources that can help you uplevel your skills on AWS. First, if you're interested in learning how to master VPCs on AWS, you can check out the video course by Ben Piper, AWS Networking Deep Dive Virtual Private Cloud. This video course will cover everything from creating a VPC, setting up a connection between VPCs with peering, leveraging network address translation using a transit VPC, and even working with IPv6. It is important to remember that this information is a key part of multiple AWS certifications, and you're likely to see it on the SysOps Associate, DevOps Professional, and Networking Specialty exams. Next, you can improve your security skills with an updated course monitoring AWS cloud security. This course will cover how you can leverage AWS services to monitor specific metrics and alert actions on specific AWS resources. Finally, 
Pluralsight has over 40, yes, four zero new labs for AWS in the last month. If you haven't tried out labs yet, it is a great way to grow your cloud skills without having to even set up your own account in AWS. You get to learn within a real AWS environment by performing a set of guided tasks. So thank you for joining me for this first episode of Cloud Tracker. Be sure to let us know what you wanna hear more of on this series moving forward. Also, remember the links to everything I've discussed are available in the episode notes. Now, if you know other people who would benefit from this content, be sure to share it with them. In addition, you can also join me for the latest news for both Microsoft Azure and GCP on the Cloud Tracker series for those platforms. They should be available on whichever platform you're using to watch this episode. One final resource for you. AWS is hosting a series of online summits this month and into early June. You can check out the link in the episode notes to see all of them and register for these virtual events. Be sure to come back next month to find out what's new in AWS here with me on Cloud Tracker.